Tuberculosis is a contagious infection caused by the bacterial species Myobacterium tuberculosis. It commonly attacks the lungs, but also has the potential to infect the lymph glands, brain, bones, joints, kidneys, and other parts of the body. Patients with TB may present with the following signs and symptoms. A cough that lasts more than two weeks. Chest pain. Coughing up blood. Feeling lethargic. Fevers or chills, weight loss, and night sweats. An estimated third of the world's population is infected with TB, but only a small proportion of those infected are actually sick because the bacteria can lie latent within the body. It is the world's deadliest infectious disease and ninth leading cause of death worldwide, killing 1.7 million in 2016. In Australia in 2017, there were 1,425 new TB notifications. This correlates to a low annual TB incidence rate of 5 to 6 cases per 100,000 population. Australia's overseas born population continues to represent the majority of TB cases. Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders record rates 6 times higher than the Australian born non Indigenous population. Myobacterium tuberculosis is a rod-shaped, non-spore-forming aerobic bacterium. Measuring 0.5 to 3 micrometers, the acid-fast bacilli possesses a unique cell wall structure. This involves a lot of the fatty acid, mycolic acid, which is covalently attached to the underlying peptidoglycan-bound polysaccharide, arabinogalactan, providing a tough lipid barrier which makes it impervious to gram staining. Liboarabinomannan, an antigen component of the cell wall, facilitates the survival of the bacteria within macrophages. TB is often spread through droplets, which can be coughed up to infect other people. Once inhaled, infectious droplets settle in the respiratory system. The majority of bacilli are trapped in the mucus of the upper airways produced by goblet cells. The cilia of the epithelial cells beat the mucus and entrap particles upward for removal. Bacteria that bypass the mucociliary system to reach the alveoli are phagocytosed by macrophages present in alveolar spaces. Remember lipoarabinomannan? Here it plays a key role as a ligand for macrophage receptors, enhancing recognition of the mycobacteria. If the bacilli are phagocytosed and neutralized, the person does not become sick. This is latent TB. The patient has no signs or symptoms and is non-infectious, as bacilli are enclosed. They aren't eliminated, however, and the disease has the potential to be reactivated when the patient becomes immunocompromised. After being ingested by macrophages, bacteria multiply slowly. Macrophages produce proteolytic enzymes and cytokines to try to degrade the bacteria, which also attracts T lymphocytes. Macrophages present mycobacterial antigens on their surface to the T cells. The local inflammatory response often causes damage to the epithelium, exposing the underlying sensory nerves to send chemical and mechanical stimuli which trigger the cough reflex. The next step is the formation of granulomas against M tuberculosis, which consists of nodular type lesions forming an accumulation of activated T lymphocytes and macrophages, creating a microenvironment that limits the replication of the mycobacteria. This environment destroys macrophages and causes necrosis at the lesion center. By two to three weeks, the necrotic environment is referred to as a caseous necrosis, characterized by low oxygen levels, low pH, and limited nutrients. Necrosis can cause bleeding by expanding blood supply and by bronchial mucosal invasion, which is why coughing up blood is a symptom. The lesion restricts further growth and establishes latency. The affected area should then undergo fibrosis and calcification, trapping bacilli in dormant healed lesions. Just when you thought it was over, sometimes the bacteria can change their phenotypic expression to adapt the survival. In primary progressive TB, the granuloma is unsuccessful. Necrotic tissue undergoes liquefaction and fibrous tissue loses structural integrity. The necrotic liquid may drain into a nearby bronchus or blood vessel, leaving an air-filled cavity at the site of initiation. This increases the likelihood of extrapulmonary TB, which involves the spreading of bacteria to organs outside of the lungs. People at particular risk of active TB include children and the elderly and adults with weakened immune systems. For example, those with HIV, uncontrolled diabetes, renal failure, malnutrition, smoking, organ transplants, and those undergoing chemotherapy.